Gotta call this dude because he is not answering and he owes me $315,000. That better fucking pick up. Make me a promise to deliver the money today. He's not answering. I've been in this situation before. Either he's gonna have to post collateral or I'm gonna have to take this to the next level. Gotta call this dude because he is not answering and he owes me $315,000. Not looking good. What's going on? I sold this guy a green chrono AP for $315,000. So he picked up the watch from our office and it was like late at night mm -hmm. and I was kind of sleeping. He sends me a wire confirmation that the wire was sent and then Sarah hands him off the watch. A week goes by, the wire doesn't clear. So I'm mm -hmm. texting him, texting him, texting him and he says basically, look, because I'm sorry my bank screwed up. Always the best excuse, right? Mm -hmm. Then he goes away on vacation for Two weeks, I can't get a hold of him. $315,000 down the drain, can't get a hold of him. Mm. So finally he responds to me last night, says, I got you covered, I got you covered on Wednesday, and um, nothing happened. So, been in this situation before, I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation for this, but in the meantime, that's uh, $315,000. Our business is mainly based on trust. A lot of times we do business overseas with dealers that we worked with before, and we'll ship them something prior to getting payment. In this situation, unfortunately, payment didn't come through. I've been in this situation before many times, and we're hoping for a perfectly good explanation for this. So for those who are not familiar with the Carolina Bucci, limited edition AP, it comes in probably one of the coolest boxes. It's a mirror box, but it's because it's actually a mirror dial frosted. Not a lot of people like but I gotta say, I am a big, big fan of this watch. I think it's just very cool looking. And it's not something that you see every day. Uh, this piece is limited to 300 pieces. Uh, it was actually originally released in 2018. Um, yeah, I think it's a cool little 36 millimeter. And uh, yeah. You dick! This is why we can't have nice things. It's because Alex comes over and just <laughs> smudges <laughs> everything. I swear to God, Alex, if you do this again. Or you miss a spot like right here. Every time I tell him not to do something, he does the exact opposite. I don't know why Nick was handling this box with white gloves. It's, it's literally just a box. <laughs> you can tell the camera what buys you're working on. Birthday buys. Birthday buys I'm working on. Working on a lot of things. Let's just say our bank account is not gonna be happy. It is my birthday week, I'm turning 31. My daughter just turned one. I should be happy, I should be chilling, but I have this deal on my mind and I just cannot let it go. Is this your birthday present? I'd pick something else, but sure, I'll take you it. You got a purple monster for your birthday? <laughs> That's a different monster, personal monster. Oh. This thing is sick though. What's up with this? He sold it. So a client of mine reached out, he had this Beautiful frosted AP, purple dial. He wanted to sell it. So we made him an offer. He accepted the offer. We got the watch in. Um, we actually sold this to another client of ours pretty quickly. And yeah, Adrian's just checking the watch out. We just got it in. So very, very important to assess the condition of these frosted pieces, especially used. And we got lucky in the fact that it's actually very, very mint condition. And it is sick. And there's a lot of hate on the frosted. Yours from uh, Mr. Sharf. See what Adrian said there about condition? Well, now you know, let me back up for a second. This watch first came out. I dubbed it the Purple Monster, the Barney watch. And there was something about that purple dial that didn't sit well with me. Eventually it kind of grew on me. The finish itself is unbelievable. When that watch hits the sun, or the sun rather hits the watch, it shines like it is actually iced out with diamonds, but it's not at the same time. Not that the price is any cheaper than the one with diamonds. This is an expensive watch. It trades at over $325,000, right? About double its retail value. But the condition is what Adrian mentioned the most. I always told you that when you bang up a watch, it's an easy refinish away from being brand new. Well, not with that watch because that finish is literally pinning. It's like literally a bunch of little pins hitting the metal and creating that finish evenly. So if you, like me, and you slap your watches against door handles, among other things, that's not an easy watch to refinish, and that's one of the biggest issues I've had with that watch in the past. I only like them in white metal. For men. For so, the, so the Bucci, the Carolina Bucci, that Nick Carolina Bucci, that one? The Bucci, yeah, yeah, Bucci. Like in yellow gold for a woman, 
it was great. The whole thing about the frost is, is it, it makes the watch sort of shine. It's like having a nice stout watch without having a nice stout watch. And what I like about it the most is that no other brand does anything like it other than AP. I mean, you know, you know, yeah, you know how to do the frosting on that? I heard. Uh, there's, there's a machine that it's almost like a, a, a thread needle that you know how I don't know what you call it. You know, you're sewing something. That's that, a sewing machine. Sewing machine with like the needle that goes down real fast. That's how they do it on I that. Think, I think it's, it's like it's, it's like it's, it's like a, it's like an etching process, more like yeah. an, it's like an engraving process. Yeah. Like I said, I do like that in yellow gold. I guess the only thing that attracts me to the Carolina Bucci is the fact that it has also a mirror dial. Mirror dial. Five, That's, it just five. makes the whole watch. Uh, can somebody write this up, by the way? All right, so we're a very transparent company, and we always tell it like it is. Sabina still does CS, and she does it well. Tell you a joke. Guy gets on his knees and says, Lord, please let me win the lottery. Please let me win the lottery. Please let me win the lottery. Does this every day for three weeks straight until finally God gives up and said, I would love to help you out, but could you please go buy the lottery ticket, right? And that's the same story that's been with Sabina. She's been having a hard time when it comes to sales and, you know, generating more sales. And she just kind of thinks it's going to eventually all come together by showing her face here and there. And not comparing myself to God, but it's my job to come back and say, well, you need to buy the lottery ticket. And Sabina, as a person, is very, very taken back, very shy. But that's not an issue because that's who she is. So it's my job to utilize whatever other resources I have around the company to reiterate what it takes in order to be a salesperson. And the main concept that I'd like to use, as one smart man once said, are the three C's. Creative, content, consistently. Chelsea, do you know who said that? That's right, I said that. So, that's what that meeting was all about. Nina, who's a newcomer to the company, ball of energy, really high strung, really knows her stuff when it comes to social media. So the only thing I was trying to reiterate to Sabina is that in order to win the lottery, you have to buy the lottery ticket, i.e. you have to take certain steps towards achieving a particular goal. I hope that I did well, and you'll be seeing more of her on social media, not just a post every other day or so. There's a disconnect somewhere in two, two places, which is why Anna is here. Number one, your social media. Your feed by now should have been a mile long. I know you want to depict yourself and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, it's about your personality and it's about the merchandise, right? Here's the issue as I see it. We're trying to grow Sabina as a salesperson. I think your job is to get her IG up to where, let's say, Alex's is, right? Oh. Where Alex generates a whole lot of business out of it. We're none of us are actually influencers. I don't like to influence anybody on anything. I just want to show them a product and I want to educate. That means that you need to do what she tells you to do because she knows what she's doing. And the results are the engagement. And what I'm also going to tell you is that if you look at, let's say, your stuff and her stuff, she's like bowl full of energy, this, that, and the other, and you're very taken back and you're very quiet, which is perfectly fine because that's who you are. I don't want you to be like her. It's the same thing I told Alex when you started being a salesperson. You need to be yourself because when people meet you in person, you need to be that awkward, quiet kid that you are. Anna, while you're here, and you should listen to this too. So one of the things that Anna does best, because she's been doing this for many years, she comes in and she really buffs the out of everybody as the merchandise comes in to shipping. You and you both need to come up to Gary and Alex and be like, look, from now on when you comes in, because there's no for say unboxing, but there should be. Anna, learn from her and like stick to her like glue in terms of the sales part of it. Majority of her business is return business. Once she gets a client, he's a client or she's a client for life. I made you do the thing with Bulgari. How many inquiries did we get from that? You got one, I got one, Adrian got one. See, it, it actually works. Whether it's sold or not is not the case. It's, it's a question of getting that contact, that initial contact in. Last but not least, the unboxings. They work well on my Instagram. They will work well on Sabina's Instagram. I think we should do unboxings with uh, Gary. I thought about that, doing a video with him. What, this piece is good. Yeah. It's, it's very nice. <laughs> it has this many carats of diamonds. <laughs> Any questions, Sabina? No. S Sabina's just... That's good. No. She said four and a half words in a meeting. We're good. We're gonna... It's actually a good thing because I talk a lot. So you know, if she talked a lot, it'd be a longer Perfect. meeting. So I'm Marco. I'm from Montreal. And uh, I just arrived now. Uh, I've been speaking with Roman on and off. We kind of met actually in London. Uh, our initial conversation like really re resonated with me. I mean, when it comes to the great market, I think Roman's the man. He's kind of the king of the great market. So yeah, having an opportunity potentially to work for Luxury Bazaar would be an honor and certainly would be you know, a dream come true. The Canadian has arrived. Roman, what's up, brother? 
How's it going, man? He looks like he just got out of middle school. Absolute These pleasure. kids are so freaking young. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I feel older and older. Marco Ferrante, a.k.a. The Watch Cardinal, a kid that I ran into virtually on YouTube. I caught one of his lives. Marco reached out to me and sent me a resume. He said, I would love to come work for you. I don't care what I need to do, but I want to come work for you. I actually ended up buying him a ticket from Canada to fly to Philadelphia and to sit down and give us a quick presentation. I wanted to analyze the business kind of from an outsider's perspective, see what you guys are doing right, where you guys can improve. Let me tell you something. This kid came super prepared. He actually had a legit presentation. He hooked up to my own monitors in my office and he went off and this kid had zero reservations. He literally said, you see the stuff you guys are doing? This is wrong. This can be done better and I can do it better. Let's just say by the time all was said and done, Marco left the office with a job offer. Super impressed by the presentation. Super impressed with you on camera. Think you might give me a run for my money. Want to say welcome aboard. We're going to be very glad to have you. We'll figure out the logistics between Canada and the United States. Shouldn't be easy. Should be an easy migration. A lot easier than coming here like I did back in 88. But uh, get stuff squared away with Vlad. And I'll hope to see you back here soon. Safe travels. Appreciate it, man. All right. See you soon. Take care. So I wake up in the morning, our banks open up around nine o'clock, so usually when the wires start coming in and I didn't see anything come through the pipeline, therefore I'm growing a little bit more concerned. It's unbelievable. This guy better pick up. Make me a promise to deliver the money today. He's not answering. It's bullshit. That's what it is. His deadline is up and he is not answering his phone. I've been in this situation before. I know that he has inventory. I work with a lot of people he works with, so either he's gonna have to post collateral or we're gonna have to take this to the next level. So Adrian always has his deals on lock. Uh, everything's always organized, usually really smooth. Um, and I always pay attention to what he's doing because I try to learn off it. But I know when Adrian starts uh, getting worried and freaking out, things are definitely not going good. This is three days. My question too is I'm gonna have my shipping team start repacking all of this, right? Yes. And what I wanna do is obviously take out all the fluff out of the Amazon boxes, all the packaging. I'm gonna to try to do my best to put like the binoculars with the binoculars and so on and so forth. In another week's time, I'm, I won't have a full year in here. I wanna put them in bigger boxes and start getting them out. I have talked about our charity, watchesforgood.org, and you guys are very well aware of our recent efforts in order to help those in need in Ukraine. We've thus far, we received $177,575.01. And on top of that, I realized that not everybody perhaps would like to make a monetary gift. So having communicated with those on the ground in Kiev, we asked for a list of items that are absolutely necessary and created an Amazon shopping list, if you will, and thus far, $40,013 worth of goods from Amazon. That's 1,337 items. Luckily, we have the logistics here at Luxury Bazaar to be able to handle all that, receive it, unpack it, sort it, pack it up into big boxes and send it off to Ukraine. In a matter of two days, we're realizing that in a week's time, this is gonna be very overwhelming. We're trying to get a shipment out every single week because if we don't, pretty soon this entire building will be filled to the roof. And again, thanks to all your generous efforts. We have a bunch of new stuff here. So based on our conversation with Roman, Sabina and I decided to team up with Gary and have him show us all the jewelry that he gets every day, do some unboxings. It's hard not to be excited about that. This is a classical vintage pure Alhambra by Van Cleef. This is one of the most popular pieces by Van Cleef. This is a very cool Bulgari piece. Then we bought some Cartier set. This is, this is all new? This is all new. This stuff we just bought, matching earrings. Oh, what? This stuff is discontinued. It's very hard to get. What's it called? I'm not sure about the collection. Okay. This is a vintage. This is gold diamonds and wood. This is vintage Van Cleef. It's uh, from uh, Rose de Noel collection. This is coral and diamond earrings. And there is a matching theme. This wow. is vintage. It's coral. It's from uh, Rose de Noel collection by Van Cleef. These are very hard to get. We also bought a bunch of the most popular things there is. It's a love bracelet by <laughs> Cartier. This is rose gold, four diamond. Do guys wear these too? Yeah. I feel like they should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's, yeah. A, there's men's sizes. Yeah. 
fully away bracelet also love bracelet by Cartier I really like this one it's this is vintage also by Cartier it's a, from Trinity collection it's a full away diamond bracelet Trinity which, wow. is all, which is also very nice that's cool. It's called, you said it's called a Trinity? Yeah, it's a that Trinity collection. <laughs> this is very rare also. This is vintage. This is coral. I love this color. This is Alhambra ring. I've seen you post this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love this. They come in different colors, but coral is very hard to get. Is it? Yeah. Is that the hard, like? It's discontinued. Oh, okay. They discontinue coral, lapis, and um, turquoise. This is called Panther de Cartier earrings. These are very special and they're very hard to find. Extremely expensive. Wow. I was about to say, I'm obsessed with these. <laughs> I think our cost is around 35,000 on these. This is one of the popular pieces by Cartier. It's called a graphic collection. It comes with box papers. What is this called? A graph. A graph? Is that like the rings or? Uh, they make rings also, a graphic collection, yeah. Okay, girls, now... What can we take? <laughs> can we take, take it some all? pictures? <laughs> For real. You can okay. sell it all. Okay, done. What's going on? This is Will. Nice to meet you guys. Will came all the way from... Boston. Boston to... Return, not re really return, just bring back his AP uh, for his service. Yeah, um, I'm actually a family friend of Roman's and I was never like a watch guy before this. Um, and I actually, my dad just turned 50, so um, my family and I decided to all pitch in and get him a watch. Um, and Alex was gracious enough to help me throughout the whole process and Got he's been watch. fantastic the entire way. Um, and we all love it, so it's very exciting. This is like a watch multi-month process. Yeah, I've been holding it for six months. It's been in, locked in a room. That's probably part of the problem. So. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Yeah. Either way, we're just gonna service it, get it all tidy up and ready for your dad to wear. Awesome. And enjoy. Yeah. Everybody's loving the content that you've been putting out on Instagram. You reset the jewelry vault, right? Yeah. So it's now your jewelry vault. Yeah. Besides, you know, Five hundred to fifteen hundred dollar pieces of jewelry. You also have half a million pieces of jewelry. This is probably one of the most exclusive Bulgari pieces out there. It's mm -hmm. called the belt. I don't want to tell you what to do. I want you to do you, but okay. I want you to do it with something that's like wow. This is actually a necklace and a belt, so it can be <laughs> one of these. It can be one of these. <laughs> yeah. uh, you break it, you buy it. All right. Oh, good. That's fine. It's payday. Adrian, yes. how do you feel about turning thirty? One. So you now you you went from you went from being thirty to be in your thirties. As long as my hair stays, it's not. As long as my I think, hair I think we've established that. It, have you seen your father right next door? <laughs> oh, dude! Oh, look at that! <laughs> 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 uh, everybody came to wish you a happy birthday. Look at her! Look at her! Look at her! Right on the desk. I think we just scared the baby. Uh, we're, we're on the buying freeze right now, two yeah. weeks, remember? Unless, unless she purchases. Yeah, yeah, right? Me and Vivian's birthday are actually about a week apart, so we were celebrating together. So guys, this is an example. When you work hard, you save up money, you get yourself a gift, something like this. This is Viv's first car, G63, all red, to match your grandpa. Nah, this is cooler. All red. So prior to the release of the Rolex models in March, clients always ask me what my thoughts and opinions or wishes are for the new releases. So I figured, hey, why not actually have Christian make some renderings of what I want them to release? So Adrian came to me uh, he wanted to see some different versions of new Rolexes and pretty much just he wanted me to bring to life what he had in mind. So right here is the original image and he wanted to make some changes like change the yellow gold to rose gold. Yeah, you should work for Rolex. They'll probably pay better too. <laughs> that, looks, that is badass. It's nice, right? Adrian, did you see the rose gold Rolex Yacht Master too? 
It didn't turn out as good in my head as it does on picture. <laughs> it looks it's great. Clean, I think. That is sick. He wants me to go back to the white you know, dial. No, I keep a black dial. I like the black dial. No, look at this thing. It's insane. It is insane. Add the red markers back. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting red markers. So you, red, do you want me to get the white back on? Or? No, no, no. Keep, keep that. Keep the black. Change the red markers. Change all the white to red. Yeah. Okay. You're like, yo, Rolex, give you a check. Do you see the whole list? No. Wait till you see the rest. So what are we doing with this stuff? People kept asking me what I think I'm doing. What do you think Rolex is doing for their releases? So I'm like, all right, There's no out. way in the world they come out with that. They're Ooh, just go back to that blue. No, that's ugly. I don't know, yeah, man. Just, oh, my God, that's know. ugly. Oh, that's ugly. Oh, my God, that's ugly. No, 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 no that's ugly. Oh, hell no, that's ugly. I don't ugly. know, bro. First off, that rose gold okay. is way better than the yellow. Nah, I hate brown. That's the chocolate, no chocolate? Because Black. Any, anything okay. they, that they do right now, Rolex, that they do with rose gold and chocolate, smashes. Yeah. This is with the red. It's not red bad. No, here. I like it with the red. Wait, I think it is. I do like it with the red. I also got to get it this like one right pops. here. Like, it pops. Y'all think it's too much black? No, it's, bro, it's perfection. Okay. okay. It is perfection. Okay. Change this part. The brown. The no, the no. Yes, 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 yes. No, not the dial. Are you talking about the bezel? Yeah. No. The, yeah. the bezel? Make the bezel. Make this chocolate. Let me just see how it looks. Just, just. Okay. Uh, work with me here. Because, me because Christian can do that type of <laughs> I think that you put the red around the hands here. Like, see that red hand? You make that yeah, red and you're boy, done. Yeah. yeah, that's, and you're done. Rolex owes me a check. <laughs> so on a rare occasion, catching Adrian in a good mood, it happened to be his birthday. And he also was all excited about the renderings of Rolex that he came up with, thinking that Rolex should send him a check, which they won't. I figured, perfect opportunity to show Adrian some Roman buys. Hmm, this should be good. Um, so I was curious, do you guys still have that? Adrian. Yeah. Can I, uh, can I come in for a sec? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> All right. Before you say anything, <laughs> a few Roman buys. You know, you, if, if you would have started, yo, Asian, I got something cool to show you. I'm like, all right, you already started this conversation. Because these are Roman point. buys. Do tell them. So for those of you who are new to the channel and you don't know what a Roman buy is, well, let me just put it to you very plain. A Roman buy is a watch more or less blind on the market that there really isn't a market value. It's just some crazy, crazy expensive watch that Roman pays some crazy, crazy price and hopes that it sells. That's a Roman buy. Platinum Graph Turbiat, retail price, 420,000 American dollars. Hublot, King Power, Turbion, retail $268,000. How much blood we were coughing off of this? No, it was a different one. This is a better one. Same thing, it's just black versus titanium. <laughs> okay, how about a two-tone Harry Winston? This is actually white, this is actually gold, PVD, wood rose gold combination. For all our Russian speakers, the Belisate Winston? Yes. It's a nice watch. Okay, so this one nice. out of three were okay? This is nice. Yeah. I didn't tell you what I paid for them yet. Our Striker, Elise Nardine Platinum. Mm. You like that one? I'm waiting to hear the price. And I got a convertible. And I got a convertible, Erberg. Now right, let's show. Erberg, I dig. Erberg, Erberg, I, I dig. Yeah, check this out. Ready? The T-Rex, John. Mm-hmm. Look up. I dig it. This I dig. Okay. This I get down with. Bring me any weird Erberg or MBNF, I dig it. I like it. No, you did not pay that for that, Cuba. These are sold prices. <laughs> These are sold prices, I hope. All right. So I got a guy. I got a guy. You did not pay those. I did not pay those prices. Okay. All right. These are the Roman buys of the week. I'm going to go ahead and pass those over to Anna. Yeah. Do that. This is what happens when I leave the office for three hours. Nick, what is an hour striker versus a minute repeater? Uh, hour striker lets you, it alerts you on hours. Yes, it can, it can, you can do it on demand or you can set it to chime every hour. And it sounds like this. I can't hear shit. You can't see shit. He did. Microphones, we got mics. Look at the mic, mic. I still can't hear that. Roman, a better conversation would be, how do you like my Rolex renderings? And does Rolex owe me a check? I think Rolex owes you two, wait, that's a second. I have a mic. I think Rolex owes you two checks. That's a nice Richard Mille you got there. Richard Mille costs a Lambo, as they say. Not uh, this one quite. Not this no, one. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. Gallardo. Yeah, yeah, there you go. 
I was at my boy's house. He had A12 GTS. Mm -hmm. Doesn't God. tell me. Shit. A12 is a Ferrari. It's a Ferrari A12, so it's a. I know the A12. A12. It's also on there, but it's a GTS version, so it's the drop top. But it's like it's like a it's like a target top. It doesn't go all the way back. It just goes back to about right here. But it's like just enough. That's cool. It's, yeah. It was very motivating. Anna, a few Roman buys for you. Why are you making that face? <laughs> that, that, that was not motivating at all. <laughs> no, I like it. I like this. Okay, much better reaction than Adrian. I, knew, I should have just came to see Anna to begin with. Didn't we say we're not going to Well, no, the buy and freeze is over. No, I gave the buy and freeze to a few select people, not me. <laughs> hey, Anna, how are you? Good, how are you? Sorry, I, um, I saw I missed your message from this morning. Okay, so one of my clients called me regarding a particular watch that he saw on a listing online, which wasn't ours, and he wanted to see if I can get it for him. No, you're good. So I was looking at this AP. It was the AP, like a Lingi, the 39 millimeter. Okay. So there's the one that I saw for like 39. I'm wondering if you can get one, like at that price or better. I got the Royal Oak Chrono on the strap. Yes. Let me take a look. Is it with box and papers, the, the one that you found? Yeah. I mean, I'll take a look. I don't know. I haven't really seen any of them. The price no, is... There's, no, there's not really any other 39 millimeter AP. For, for, that price, for that price, right? the only thing that I can think of is maybe, well, not definitely not in the 30s. I would like something in steel. Oh, okay. Um, a dual time, the stainless steel one. Okay, how much is the 37, do you know? The 30, the yes, the 37 is brand new. It will be 49,000. Okay. The dual time, yeah. it's in the high 40s, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, as well. take a look and then if you can, see if you can find out about the Alenghi too. If you can't we'll do. For any I'll, I'll see, I will see what I can do in the Alenghi. I'll, I'll uh, do a little bit of research, see who has it and what's the best price I can get it for. And I'll give you a call back as soon as okay. we have some news. All right? Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'll just buy it either way. But would you guys take in uh, the Vacheron that I have? Not the gold one, the, the second gen steel one I have. Or am I better off just selling it? Send me a picture, I'll take a look. I'll see where the price is at at the moment and I'll let you know. Okay. So that watch actually wasn't available, but if it does come in, I'll make sure to let him know. In the meantime, we'll find him something else. All right, so the birthday week was not ruined. After an intense battle, he did exchanges back and forth with a dealer in Asia. We finally got paid when you are dealing with large six-figure deals and you send stuff on trust and then the dealer disappears for a couple weeks. Essentially you think, you know, God forbid something happened to them. Nothing did happen. The gentleman actually ended up being on vacation, turned his phone off, which is something we should all do. And uh, thankfully it was resolved. Back to business. So a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. We finally got paid. There was a perfectly good explanation. The explanation was a very good vacation and a few too many drinks. So uh, I thank the gentleman who paid us and we look forward to doing more business this time cash on delivery. For those of you guys that have been following us for a while, you know that Adrian tends to be a bit of a drama queen, right? He takes everything to heart, and you know what, rightfully so, he treats his company as if it is his own. There's still a lesson there to be learned. A gentleman I know in the industry has been doing this for a bit longer than me, probably about 35 years in the industry, taught me one single thing, and that is, what the fuck is it? <laughs> Things don't go bad until they go bad. So you have to be really, really careful in this industry while taking certain risks. Because we do deal with a tremendous amount of money. And uh, you never know, a person can get hit by a bus uh, and you're out a significant amount of money. So you have to tread water carefully and never take unnecessary risks. Regardless of the fact that this really was a case of someone disappearing for a week because they decided to say, screw it, I need some time off put their phone on, do not disturb, and enjoy a vacation. Something that I at last did, never. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And as always, like, comment, share, subscribe, all those great things you do to help our videos and channel grow. And we'll see you next week on Gray Market.